Well, hey there, guys, and welcome back. On this week's show, we're going to be making a router table. Well, for many years here in the shop, I had a router table, and it looked like this. And since I've got my Jessam set up, I love the router table, I love the top, but I don't like the way that my stuff is all jammed underneath in totes and that sort of thing. It's not good for the equipment, it's not good for a workflow, it's hard to find my stuff. And I figured it's time to make a cabinet for the bottom of my router table. And while playing around with designs, I realized I loved my old one. My old one worked really, really well. I never had a time or an issue that I thought, geez, I wish it was like this, or I wish it was like that, or I wish I had more room here. It always worked. So I'm going to duplicate it. And it all starts off with some three quarter inch plywood and cutting the panels for the sides of our router table. Well, with the router table, what I would like to do is use the original hardware or the original brackets of the stand that it's on now and incorporate that to mount to my wooden cabinet down below. What I will end up losing are these steel legs here and the supports underneath, but I'm okay with that. So after taking some measurements and taking into account the four inch casters that I will be adding to the uh, cabinet afterwards, I have come up with a measurement of 30 inches high and we're going to make it 22 inches wide for our side panels. So we're just going to cut them out of three quarter inch plywood over at the table saw. And there we have our two side panels cut. We now need to cut the back panel. And for that, we're going to use some half inch ply. And in this case, we're going to make it the same height, 29 and a half inches tall, but we're going to make it 26 and 11 sixteenths wide. Now, how did I come up on that measurement? I basically clamped these boards to the frame of my router table to see how far apart they were going to be and our backboard is going to mount in a rabbit on the back end that is three eighths of an inch by three eighths of an inch. So basically it's the full width minus three quarters. I hope that makes sense to you, but let's get the back panel cut. With our back panel cut, we now need to cut the rabbit that is going to house that backer board. So I've installed a dado blade. What I've done is I've installed it for a three quarter inch thick board because we're going to need it in just a minute. But I've set the fence so that it only cuts half inch wide here and I have the height of the dado blade set at three eighths of an inch. So that will yield us a three eighth inch deep by half inch wide rabbit and that is what is going to house our backer board. You just want to be sure and careful that you're cutting the right side. So just pay some attention and uh, we'll get these two rabbits cut. So now with those rabbits cut uh, to house our backboard, we need to cut some dados that are going to um, end up housing some shelving that we're going to put into this unit. So the first one that we need to do is going to be 15 inches down from the top of each of our side panels on the inside surface. And they're going to be three quarters of an inch wide to house the ply plywood and they're going to be three eighths of an inch deep. The next shelf dado that you're going to need is going to be 19 and a quarter inches down from the top 
And again, all the same dimensions, three quarters of an inch wide and three eighths of an inch deep. And the very last set of dados that we're going to need here will be for the base or the floor of our router table. And they will be from the top of our panels, 28 inches down, all the same dimensions as far as the setup goes. Well, at this point, the interior of each one of your panels should look like this. Uh, with our three dados cut to house our shelves and our back rabbit cut to house our backboard. At this point, we want to cut our shelves that will go into this dado right here, and our bottom dado uh, in both of our side panels. This one here gets something a little different. We'll get into that in just a bit. But what you want to do is measure from the back here where your rabbit is to the front edge of the plywood and that will be the depth of your shelf. Well, at this point in time, you should have something that looks like this and I've just dry fit it here. But we now need to cut an upright between these two shelves, the lower shelf here and the upper shelf here. What you wanna do is you wanna measure carefully between the two and then add a half an inch because this centerpiece is going to be housed in a quarter inch deep dado, both in this board and in this board. So we can cut it, it'll be the same depth that you had before, and, and then I'll see you when I get that cut. And if you were following along with the same dimensions that I've been using, this piece ends up being 12 and three quarter inches wide. What we need to do now is we need to cut a couple of uprights from up here and what you're going to do is you're going to measure from the top of your shelf here to the top of the router table and then add a quarter of an inch because again we're going to have a quarter inch dado in this shelf here that's going to house those two pieces so from the top of the shelf to the top of the router table add a quarter of an inch and for me they'll still be that same 26 and 15 16 wide so i'm going to get those done and i'll come back and i'll see you sorry just a quick correction not 25 or 26 and 15 16 but rather 21 and a half <laughs> what was i thinking well now that we have some of our pieces cut this piece that we cut right here, this is going to be for the upright in between our drawers. So we need to cut some dados and we will cut on the bottom of this shelf or the top of this shelf dead in the middle, a three quarter inch wide dado that is one quarter of an inch deep all the way along from front to back. As well for these pieces here, these will be the uprights in between where our motor housing sits. And for that, just in the top section of this shelf, we're going to need a quarter inch deep dado that is going to house these and that will form the box of our cupboards on either side of our router motor. So with those two dados cut, our upright piece should fit, if we measured right, should fit right in here. Just like that. All right. So these will be our openings for our drawers. However, you remember we have this dado down here at the bottom. We have to duplicate that dado on this side of this upright 
and on this side of this upright, they are going to be a quarter of an inch deep each. And again, they'll be three quarters of an inch wide and they will house this divider right here. So let's head over to the table saw and we can cut these two dados. And now with those two cut, that should line our dados up perfectly to accept our shelves or the uh, horizontal sections of our drawer compartments. So for now, we'll just slide this in just to keep everything straight in our mind so that we know what we're cutting and what we're not. We now need to cut two dados in the top of this shelf right here. Um, I'm gonna take some measurements over at the router table. I want to make sure it clears the dust collection and gives enough room for the motor housing. So you may want to do that yourself and check to see how much room you need in your center compartment. So after taking measurements underneath my router table, um, there's really no great place for me to put these dados. So what I'm going to have to do is I'm going to end up having to modify it afterwards to suit my table. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to account for the 3 8 inch deep dado that's here and I will leave a six inch compartment on either side. So the edge of my dado, quarter inch deep, three quarters wide, will start at six and three eighths of an inch from the edge of each board. Well, now I flip the router table upright and we're just going to put our shelves here or our dividers into those two dados that we just cut. So this will be where your motor is. Uh, we'll have bit storage and a cupboard on one side and of course four drawers in the bottom. Well, at this point in time, we need to cut some more dados. And where they're going to be is on this inside edge here and this inside edge here. And that will be for kind of a keeper at the top to stabilize this shelf and keep it all together. So for that, they're going to be three quarters of an inch wide and a quarter of an inch deep on the inside top face here, inside face here, inside top face over here, and then this one as well. Well, with those rabbits cut in the top, I think I may have said dado earlier because I was using a dado blade, but those rabbits are cut ready to accept our plywood spacer here. We now need to cut those spacers. So you will just measure carefully between these two pieces here to get the interior dimension of the shelf. You will then add a quarter inch and a quarter inch to accommodate for your rabbits. So add a half inch to whatever this is. It will be the full length of the cabinet, which I believe was 21 and a half inches deep. That's exactly what it is. And we'll do the same thing on this side over here. We also need to, while we're in the mood for cutting, we need to measure down at the bottom here from edge to edge to get our width of our shelf, but then add a quarter inch on this side for our quarter inch dado but three eighths of an inch on this side to match this one. And again, it will be 21 and a half inches deep and we can slide those into place once we get them cut.
Well, this is almost our carcass done. We still have a few more pieces that we'd like to make before we can assemble the carcass. And we're looking at the back of the router table at the moment. This now will be the right hand side of our router table and I am going to be adding four router bit trays here. So what I'm going to need is three quarter inch plywood for each one of the router bit trays and they're going to be a sixteenth of an inch less than what this is wide. So this is six inches here, so fifth or five and fifteen sixteenths and the depth is 21 and a half inches. But again, I'm gonna back it off 1 16th of an inch just so that we don't have it slamming against the backboard of our uh, router table once we get that installed. So four pieces cut at 21 and 7 sixteenths long and five and 15 sixteenths wide. And there we have our four router bit trays and they will eventually get mounted into this space here. But in order to mount them, we're going to need some tray runners. And for that, we're just gonna use half inch plywood, a piece on either side. They will be 21 and a half inches long. We will need four that are at two and 15 sixteenths of an inch wide and four that are at two and nine sixteenths of an inch wide. So I'm going to get them cut and then we'll come back and I'll show you how to install those. Well, I'm just going to show you the method of installation. I don't think we need a video of it because um, there's not much to it really. But what we're going to do is we're going to take one of our bit trays and we will slide it into the bottom of our bit compartment. And once we get that there, I'm going to use a ruler. Uh, it's about a 32nd of an inch thick, I would say. We're just going to place the ruler on one side and then we're going to take one of our 2 and 15 sixteenths of an inch spacers or runners, place it on top of the ruler, and we're going to glue this and use brad nails to secure it in place. Once we get that one glued and we get the one on the other side glued as well, then we will take another bit shelf, place it on top of those two runners. We will then place our ruler and then another two and fifteenth inch spacer, two and fifteen sixteenths of an inch spacer. From there, what we'll do is place another shelf and then the ruler, and then we're going to use the two and nine sixteenths inch spacer so that our two bottom bit drawers will actually be taller than our two top drawers. And we'll just systematically go all the way to the top, ensuring that we have the proper spacers installed. And at the end of it all, well, I'll show you what you have when I get mine all done. And at this point with all those spacers or rails installed, you should have something that looks like this. And your bit trays should be able to just slide in there nicely. That space of the ruler that we put there really goes a long way to making it so that they, they slide smooth. Uh, we're not jamming up as we install them. So the next thing that you want to do really is to put this whole carcass together. Now, I don't know what to tell you. I'm going to be using brad nails. One suggestion that I would give you is that if you're going to do that as well, I would take the time to go through with a square and mark the center line of each area that you need to start shooting nails. That way when you get the glue run down the middle here, say on this upright piece, you're shooting nails through your upright and not missing and having them come into your drawer compartments. So I'm going to glue this whole carcass together and then there's not much to do after that, but wait. And unfortunately that's all the time that we have for this week's show. Uh, we've made some great progress. We have the entire carcass put together and glued up, 
The only thing I have left to do here is we're going to mount the backboard to solidify the whole thing. Um, I would suggest getting a helper to put it together as well. I would also suggest to be sure that you're checking it for square all the way along. If you haven't already, please don't forget to like and subscribe. Click the bell so that you don't miss the notifications of future episodes of the show. It's been a lot of fun. I'm hoping this is going to be a great addition to my shop, just like my original one was. I don't see why it wouldn't be. I hope that you're going to try this yourself. I hope that you've enjoyed the content up until now, and I honestly hope that you're going to join me again next week when I bring you yet another woodworking video.